Oh, good morning, everybody. Where are you? You're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I'm stuck inside a silk cocoon. Let me show you. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, I'm anchored off an island. I'm a boat in a tunnel tent. It's day two. Uh, yesterday we had a pretty cool adventure. Oh, caught some really nice fish. Had some uh, yeah, fish tacos. Uh, tried to use the drone, an underwater drone, and that didn't work. Hopefully got some <laughs> interesting footage of a, a giant trevally smacking my lure and then smoking, smoking me on a, on a slightly undersized outfit. <laughs> I'm going to have to get that drone. Let me just get out of here. The sun is just on the horizon. We need to get moving, because today is another day of adventures. It's a pretty. There's the sun. Just looks like it's been up for about 10 minutes, I guess. There's my tunnel tent on the front of the boat. We're surrounded by all the islands. This is an island. The water's actually really clear. Have a look at that. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, look at that. Wow, beautiful. Oh, oh there's some white cockatoos up on the tree up there. Yeah, I tried to catch um, squid last night, as well as um, using the underwater drone, which yeah failed miserably. Actually, I had a squid. I had it. I had him right, right here. <laughs> um, what was I trying to do? I was trying to get the camera, uh, the the lights going so you guys could see him. And then he fell off, and <laughs> that was gonna be our breakfast. So I think what we'll do is, I'm gonna rip the tent down. I think it's dry. We actually had about half an hour of um, sprinkling rain last night. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's all dry. So I'll rip that down and have some, uh, yeah, very quick breakfast on the go to a spot that I wanna fish. And then we might come back here and see if we can get some squid. Look how cool it is. <laughs> I wonder what that white bird is on the on the shore there. Let's have a look. It could be a cockatoo. That would be really odd to have a cockatoo right down on the water. Nah, it's a it's a white heron or egret. The reason I thought it might be a cockatoo is because over here. Oh, there we go, there's cockatoos there. I think I can see three. There you go. Yep. Almost forgot to tell you. The reason I was inside the uh, silk cocoon because I didn't. I've got a, I've got a fly screen for here, but I didn't put it up. And yeah, a few mosquitoes came and found me from shore, so I was hiding in the silk cocoon, not to get bitten. But I really want to get out there really early while it's really calm. It should be a calm day actually, it should be 10 knots I reckon. And if the conditions are right, I might go for a bit of a snorkel with the spear gun. It was also a bit warm to sleep in the sleeping bag last night. It's a really nice temperature right now. It's um, yeah, probably 25 degrees, maybe 26. That's my pillow. <laughs> I like things to pack up, yeah, really nice and small. Yeah, have a nice big clean deck area oh and i meant to say yesterday when we got here the cicadas were nuts on shore and then when i was brushing my teeth last night the um the whoop whoop birds <laughs> i think they're like a barking owl um yeah they were calling from one side of the bay to the other side it was yeah, really quite nice that was a pretty quick getaway i was awake at let's see 20 to 6 and now it's two minutes past six breakfast on the run <laughs> Uh, it'll get me, keep me going for another hour or two. Um, but yeah, I, I really plan on coming back to this little bay. The tide's dropping, I think. Low tide's about 8.30 maybe. Um, so that's yeah, almost almost half tide now. The spot I'm going to is a little little tiny um, rock with a couple of other rocks next to it. Yeah, don't know if we're gonna use the big lure or plastic first, probably. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the conditions are like when we get out there. But yeah, beautiful day. It's it's gonna be 10 knots. Um, that's the forecast. And it'll probably be a lot less than that till at least lunchtime. Just wanted to try and show you how clear the water is in here at the moment. It's um yeah, it's really nice. 
You can actually see some little little green fish there. That's cool. Oh, hope I hope it's like this when we come back because the tide is dropping. Um, and the water from the, the coast is actually quite dirty here. So we'll see how we go. But yeah, oh, if it's like this, I'll definitely be jumping in later with a spear gun and, and having a having a play. So we're a little way away from this rock, but there's another rock submerged here. First lure I'm using this morning is a uh, Lively Lure Surface Skipper 160. And I'm hoping there's mackerel here. Actually, there, there should be mackerel there. I saw a few yesterday. Um, the big Spanish should come flying up from the depths. And it's a little bit overcast, which is actually um, really quite good for mackerel, uh, especially the Spanish. They, um, their eyes don't, um, what's the word? They, don't, they can't dilate their eyes. So when it gets really bright, they go down deep. And uh, here, yeah, when it's like this, they're much more likely to, to come up to the surface. But we can also get some big GTs, like the one that smoked me yesterday. Uh, go and check that video out if you haven't seen it. That was pretty epic. I had the drone up in the air, and then um, I was literally just, just filming a bit of scenery. And then about a, I don't know, a dozen GT swam past the boat and I'm like, nah, I've got to, got to cast at him. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I got it on video, the strike. Um, and then he proceeded to smoke me <laughs> royally. That's right in the zone. There's, um, it looks like uh, garfish right under my lure. And we're not far off the, um, the shallow edge there. Oh well, we might try another spot. Go over there on that little island. Oh, have a look, have a look. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that looked either a tuna or a mackerel. Oh, let's do that again. I don't think it was a GT, but yeah, it was really fast. And I was kind of looking down. Hopefully you guys saw it. Let's get in there. Turns out, a little bit short is okay. <laughs> Come on. I do think that was a tuna the way it um, was like just straight behind it and speeding up. That's um, yeah, it's kind of what tuna do. It's been a long time since I've used a popper. I, I really like the surface strikes. But you do get more fish when you're um, using like subsurface stick baits. No one's told the fish though. <laughs> Oh, you go crazy out here by yourself. <laughs> I'm just moving from spot to spot, trying to find where they're sitting. If after an hour of um, surface, try a stick bait. This is from Adrenaline Tackle. This actually had a massive mackerel um, come and smash it probably oh, three trips ago. So I have a lot of confidence in that. An hour of casting and not catching these big lures is a long time. It's now after seven, and I've only had that one uh, initial follow right to the boat. I've just spotted some fish on the sounder. So we're gonna use the 3 8 ounce jig head from yesterday, and one of Fred Bunny's soft plastics. They worked pretty good yesterday, and it seems like the fish aren't on the surface, so we need to go down a little bit. There we go. I tried gold and pink yesterday, but not white. So yeah, there's lots of little bait fish swimming around here. So, I mean, we could get anything here, really. We could get coral trout, cod, um, finger mark, mackerel, giant trevally, any of the Lajana species, yeah, there could be anything here. So I'm just gonna, how deep is it? 23 meters. Woo. <laughs> Probably not quite as deep where my lure is going because there's a bit of a lump over here. As soon as it hits the bottom, oh, there you go. Something just tried to eat the bait fish. I was doing this yesterday and I got a, a tuna of all things. Oh, that was a hit. Like literally a meter off the bottom and a, um, a mac tuna comes and grabs it. It was bizarre. And looks like we had probably a mackerel bite my tail off. Oh. 
Oh, that was on the, on the drop. Yes. Okay, what have we got? I'm going to say... Oh, he's... Oh, he might have been near the bottom. Oh. Oh, he's got a bit of head shaking going on. Let's get him up. Come on, come on. Feels like Trevally, but no, it is a finger mark. Nice, golden snapper. Oh, these things are great eating. I'm gonna take that one home. Oof. Oh, a bit of weight in him too. Look at that one. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh, these are one of the Lajanas. Oh, yeah. Big strong paddle tar, and that's why they call them finger mark. They've got that, that there. Oh, let's get him out up in the sun and I'll show you his face. There we go. Not sure what the best best direction for the sun is, but they are they're a very tasty and yeah, beautiful fish. I'm gonna cut his throat and brain spike him. Oh, look at the gold on his face. Woo! <laughs> I have to get a glamour shot of this guy. Can you tell why they call them golden snapper? <laughs> they are, yeah, really nice and gold. Hopefully I'm getting them all in there. I'm squinting because the sun's right in my face. <sighs> but they are, they are beautiful fish. And uh, yeah, probably one of the tastiest fish in the ocean. These and Nanagai, um, they're, they're my favorite. Actually, I'll get a quick measurement for you guys. I know he's legal, but we'll just have a see how, how big he is. He is 50. Six centimeters. There we go. Beautiful fish. It might be hard for you guys to see, but there's still plenty of fish down there. And they're not right on the bottom. They're two, three, four, even six meters up. That's probably what what they, um, the finger mark again, because he hit me before it got to the bottom. See you guys. Just had a chat with these guys. Um, they're actually fans. They, um, they said they were fishing over here half an hour ago and saw a, either a big whale or a tiger shark jump clean out the water. Oh geez, that, um, that doesn't excite me for going in the water. But uh, let's try see if we can get another one of these uh, finger mark or, or anything really. We'll just have a, have a play around. But I tell you what, the tide has actually turned. So the fish will probably have moved. Ooh, that could have been a take. It is. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, that is a oh, monster. Oh. 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 That is a big fish. I'm going to say it could be a big cod. Oh. Oh. A lot of power. Got eight kilos of drag on this now. After yesterday's Trevally. Oh, he doesn't like leaving the bottom. After this, I'll show you the rod and reel I'm using. Oh, that is. Oh, now you know what? It could be Trevally. Yes, it's a Trevally. Oh, the head shakes and the runs. That's not a cod. All right, let's um, lose the electric. Um, I had it on anchor lock. Now we're going to follow this fish out in open water. Oh, <laughs> I didn't expect that on the on the soft plastic right on the bottom again. Oh, he's coming up to the surface. That's perfect. And yeah, he's got that thump, thump, thump like a big trevally. Oh, a lot of weight in this. Oh, oh I think he's on the bottom there, trying to rub it off. That's what it feels like. Oh, what's that over there? Something over there. Oh, got me. Got me. Oh, we lost more line, no doubt. Oh no, I'll lead a leader let go. Oh, man. Yeah, too much pressure maybe, I don't know. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the Saltus rod from Daiwa with the BG5000, uh, 50 pound J braid and 50 pound fluorocarbon. 
Oh, I need a bigger, bigger outfit. Uh, I, need, I just need to put more drag on them. I need like probably 12, 12 or more kilos of drag. You may or may not believe this, but there's the plastic I just lost. How insane is that? Look at that. Got torn out of here. Wow. <laughs> In all this ocean, I managed to find the same plastic I just lost. That's cool. Very cool. I'm going to have one more go here. The tide has actually stopped. It's, it's low tide now. And I think it's time to go for a bit of a snorkel. I've stepped it up to a one ounce jig head. Maybe that'll get me down to the bottom fish quicker. Because I'm after, yeah, like coral trout and um, snappers, that sort of thing. Not the big GTs. <laughs> Not on this rod. <sighs> five, yeah, 5,000 reel. And 50 pound braid is just, just not quite enough for these guys. Actually, it's, it's a long way short. <laughs> Look at all the bait fish. That's cool. Yep. Okay, I got something. Oh, it's not very big. We're in 23 meters of water right here. So this is going to take a little while. And I don't want to do it too fast. Because I probably want to release this guy. Whatever it is. Possibly a cod. It's not, not doing much fighting. No, it's a coral trout. There you go. Coral trout actually release really quite well. Oh, and look how red he is. Look how beautiful. Oh, that is... Oh, no Photoshop needed here. Hey, I'll get that hook out of you. Oh, and see if your big, big brother is going to come back. There we go. And yeah, thanks to Fred Bunny for donating these lures to me. You guys might rem remember him from the naked mermaid fishing for Mangrove Jack. <laughs> I'm going to head back to where I camped and see if the conditions are any good for having a spearfish. Having heard that a big shark just jump clean out of the water, just not excite me at all. Um, the water out here is a little dirty. Hopefully in the bay it might be a little cleaner. It's actually looking really clear in here and nice. Um, I just need to find a spot where I can drop the anchor so it doesn't damage any coral. I'm going to look for like a little bit of sand or something. This, this is looking nice. Really clear. Woo. So I've got my anchor in the middle of the sand here. I've only got really short chain and there's no real good coral here to speak of anyway. Uh, the thing you guys probably don't realise is that in this area we've had, I'm going to say, 10 shark attacks in the last three to four years. Could be more than that. A um, couple of fatalities. And that makes me really nervous to, to jump in by myself. Um, right here where we are, it's, it's only like a metre and a bit deep and it's, I wouldn't have a problem here. But where the crayfish are is on the edge of the reef here where it drops down and that's where the big, big sharks tend to hang out. So that's, that's my trepidations. <laughs> but we're going to jump in and give it a go. And hopefully I upload this video. <laughs> Guess what I am? <laughs> Gotta have some fun.
Oh, that was cool. Lots of interesting critters there. No crayfish. Um, and a lot of the big fish were up in the shallows. Oh, good water in my ear. <laughs> oh, it feels actually, it, it's really nice to get back in the water and have a snorkel. Oh, that moray ear was really cool. I don't know if I got him real well because the light wasn't the best. But um, yeah. And the, the clams, every colour imaginable. Wow. And there's always a couple little fish that I've never seen before. Um, I don't know if I managed to get him a little sort of an orange spotty one. Um, no idea what he is. And then there was another one which I couldn't even see. Um, couldn't even get the camera close to, sorry. I definitely should jump in the water more often. It's, um, yeah, it's really nice once you're in there. And you always see something new and interesting so uh, yeah I, I, I will I will endeavour to do more of it these are some um, mangoes I uh, grew at home mm. love fresh mango they're just so tropical you're out in the tropics on a boat mm. and the freshness of these is oh, it's just, just amazing I ran out of um, my first fuel tank before which means two things one, I need to get a bigger fuel tank, but two, we have to start heading back towards where I came from. I would have liked to um, go out to, there's a, like a rock island out here, probably another 10 kilometers, but that's really pushing it because that adds 20 kilometers to the whole trip. Oh, I'll tell you what, these mangoes are good. Mm. I, don't, I don't know where we're gonna go yet. Um, it's, it is a beautiful day, it's like, Oh, five knots, five knots of wind, um, and yeah, just go for a bit of an explore. I think we'll definitely have a bit more of a fish, um, but I think we'll, we might try and find a nice little beach and cook up uh, lunch. No excuse today. I've still got that half a coral trout. just remembered there's a bay on the mainland that I've only ever been to once and that was well, at least 15 years ago maybe longer I reckon it'd be cool to go and have a look at that it's, it's kind of on the way home there's a little bit of a sidetrack but not too much we might have a little fish before then and then yeah I reckon we'll cook up our lunch hopefully not dinner <laughs> I haven't eaten much today Here's something interesting for you. If I cast to the right hand side of my rod, I'm breaking the law. If I cast to the left hand side, I'm fine. <laughs> How bizarre is that? It's, um, yeah, this is a yellow zone and this is a green zone. And green zone, no fishing, no shell collecting, no spear fishing. Whereas in this side, I can fish. So, we'll fish this side. And how still is it? I don't know if you heard me before while we were motoring, but it's a glass out. There's not even five knots of wind there. It's, um, yeah, very cool to be out on the water. Let's see if we get some big coral trout along here. I reckon we should. I'm just traveling along the coastline until I see something that is worthy of a cast and I stop, have a couple of casts and yeah, keep going. I can't help filming everything. It's just such a nice day today. It's calm, it's, yeah, it's just beautiful. Oh wow, massive cliff over here. Just one big boulder, have a look. One big boulder that comes down. So cool. Can you guys see that? 
that is just insane amount of fish. I'm gonna change from the um, the jig back to a soft plastic. Oh, insanity. Oh, that was a hit. Got him, yes. Oh, lots of line out. Oh, oh almost had me in. No, no, get back out, get back out. Oh, got a bit of power, this fish. Oh. Oh, where is he going? Sideways. Oh, that was cool. Oh, I had so much loose line there and he, he grabbed it. Well, well, I wasn't ready. What have we got? Oh, oh, belly hook coral trout. Poor little guy. No wonder he's fighting hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna let you go, buddy. I've got enough fish. Oh, I bet that hurts too. Oh, he's not a bad one. Not bad at all. He would go, let's see, how big is he? There to the poo hole. Yep, 52. 52 centimeter trout. Oh, poor little guy. Got hammered in the in the tum tum. But he'll be fine. Oh. He'll be fine. Hey, you wanna go? Beautiful fish. Look at the colours on the top there. Hey, off you go, buddy. Oh, let's see if there's anything else down there. This is that was cool. People ask me two questions quite a lot. One is, why do I let so many fish go, and how can I catch so many fish? And it's actually the same question because I find a new area. I don't kill all the fish. I take one, maybe two, and then I know I can go back there. And catch more and that's that's yeah that's that's my style the um, the ocean is my fish keeper yeah oh that was another nice hit I missed that one there's a lot of current here that's a one ounce jig head that's hard keeping it on the bottom oh another hit got him yes oh that is a big one that is a monster oh so much bigger than the last one. Oh, almost had me under. I'm going for a big coral trout. The way he's fighting and the, oh, he had me under there before. Oh, I reckon he's close there. Pump and wine, that's what you gotta do. Pump and wine. Oh, oh I thought I had him off the bottom there. Oh, this is a big trout. I'm gonna, I'm calling it for a big coral trout. No. <laughs> oh. oh, no, it could be a cod. Could be a cod. I just got to look at him. Yep, there we are. It's a big cod. Oh, <laughs> oh that wrecked my hand. Oh. Oh, I'm going to have to get a glamour shot with this guy. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> big orange spot cod. He's got to go, oh, 12, 14 pounds, seven kilos or so. If I didn't have this size outfit, I wouldn't have got this guy. Look at him, bucket mouth. I could, I could easily put my fist in there. Ow. Oh, I broke it. Oh, no. Oh, I just broke that off. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Oh, no glamour shot. Um, he'll probably push that, that out. Oh, it's only a single hook. That was a shame. I wanted to show you that fish. He was probably about oh, 75 centimetres long and around the seven kilos. Yeah, I just um, probably should have done that a little differently. But I was going to let him go anyway. I don't, I don't like killing those fish. Um, they're actually the guardians of spots. Um, what happens is a big one of those moves into a spot and then all the slightly smaller fish feel safe and if you kill those guys that spot can become barren because yeah sharks live in open water and and this is kind of an open water spot it's a bit of a lump but it's still open water anyway i'm going to re-rig and um, yeah, see if we can pull something else out of here <laughs> but yeah never fished this particular spot um, that's why i'm exploring that's what you do when, you, um, when you've got enough fish. 
I go exploring, um, let all the fish go, and then I know I've got a reasonable spot to come back to next time. In case you didn't catch it before or I didn't say it, I'm using a one ounce jig head with about a six and a half inch um, paddle tail. Changing to pink this time. I don't think it make any difference. Let's see if we can get uh, yeah, another fish. Hopefully not another cod. I don't, I don't like fighting cods. Is that a take? Oh, yep, yep, halfway up and take. Oh, that was a mackerel, I'd say. Oh, <laughs> oh, yep, look at that. Shredded, shredded by mackerel. Those little curly things, that's, um, it's either shark or mackerel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mackerel. Oh, shredded completely. Well, I got sidetracked. <laughs> this wasn't the place I was gonna come to, but I saw it and I thought, that's a nice looking beach. And yeah, it is, it's a really nice, nice long sandy beach. Very cool. Oh, it's very warm, very still. And uh, oh, it's just great. Oh, and I saw, um, two turtle tracks over there so I think the turtle went up laid its eggs and then went back down um, I actually found a bunch of turtle tracks yesterday on a beach which is really cool those are mackerel swimming around in the shallows and then I don't know how long it takes a month maybe two they hatch yeah and then the little turtles are all on their own Ooh, who's driving the boat <laughs> I've just got it set and yeah I'm gonna have to yeah steer very quickly right now otherwise we're gonna crash but yeah I'm just yeah just poking around different places and seeing what I can see um, I just I just like adventuring and hopefully I've encouraged a whole bunch of you to do that as well I reckon I would have I started going to that other spot and then I'm thinking why, why would I this is a beautiful beach so I'm going to take you and show you the turtle tracks I'm going to cook some lunch up I meant to say last night too I saw quite a lot of thunder uh, lightning and thunder no well actually I had half and half an hour of sprinkles but there's actually some big storms that's the mainland there there's some big big thunderheads there and then if you look over the the ridge here that, that white line there that's a massive storm about to to come this way so we'll be right i'm pretty sure um it's about an hour's run home from here oh it's always nice to go and have a little walk around these here are casuarinas um other name is she oak that's it and let's check this turtle out he's um been on a bit of a mission so you can see that was that was actually um, I reckon last night because the tides are getting smaller so yeah the water's come right up to it he's walked up to here gone oh I can't get through this tree <laughs> gone around the tree doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. and then somewhere up here oh maybe maybe he didn't like that spot either doesn't look like oh no yeah i don't know but he's he's wandered off over this way a bit ah uh, here we go that looks could be the spot hmm i don't know he's had a dig there and then he's kept walking had a crawling along here and maybe maybe he decided it wasn't the best beach for him because then he's gone under this tree <laughs> and then yep back in the water so I, I can't be sure that that turtle actually laid eggs there. Um, I'm not going to go digging around for it. That's yeah, it's not the done thing. Um, but yeah, let's go set up the kitchen and cook some lunch. What do you reckon? Fish and chips? I reckon fish and chips. While you guys weren't looking, I set up my little kitchen. It's under a, uh, a she oak. That's that whistling noise. And I'd like to just give a quick shout out to drifter they um, supply most of my if not all of my cooking gear if you're um, in the need of something or you like something on the on the videos check out drifter special thanks to Luke uh, for sending me the stove I've used it twice and I'm already in love with it it's got um, I'll show you a couple of features like most stoves it's got the uh, the windbreak here but then as an added feature it's got a little windbreak for the gas ring and uh, yeah, really nice little clicker there. 
So this is definitely a big step up from my last one. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a potato and chop it into large chips. I've just got a little bit of oil in the frying pan and I'm not even gonna worry about drying the potatoes. We're just gonna chuck them in. When that oil gets to temperature, we'll turn it down a little bit. So this is just fast, dirty cooking wild style on the beach. It's a bit after lunchtime and quite often I I um, head home and, and cook, cook in the bush kitchen but today is just such a beautiful day like it's it's still only just a 10 knot breeze it's it's gonna kick up to 15 very shortly but yeah the colors the feel it's it's just all really nice Woo. <laughs> And you don't need to always do fancy cooking. I, I like fancy cooking. Um, last night I did fish tacos and they were mwah, excellente. Uh, but this, this is really two, three ingredient, maybe four. I'll see what I've got left in the fridge there. Uh, but you really don't need a lot to have a nice lunch in paradise. That wind's actually starting to kick up. You can, you can tell by the, the trees moving around a bit. And everybody always asks me about these little little black tongs, and yep, I got them from Drifter. <laughs> That's why I said that, you know, like I um, I let you guys know that I get all my cooking gear from Drifter. Because yeah, they're they're a great Australian company. Ah, this is the fish I caught yesterday. Seeing as it's cut open, I'm just gonna yeah. Use use the second fillet of this. The um the other half I ate yesterday. <laughs> fish tacos. And I know the husk knife isn't ideal for filleting or skinning fish, but it's the only knife I brought on the trip. Herbs and stuff. That's my fish done. Beautiful. The boat's behaving itself. You'll notice it's slowly getting further away because the wind's pushing it and then I, I pull the anchor up to, to keep it straight. But yeah, still behaving itself. And check out the colour of these potatoes. The timing couldn't be more perfect. The fish is ready to go in and they are just a really nice golden colour. I'm not doing anything to the fish other than the shallow frying it. Oh, natural. Beautiful. That fish is going to take two minutes aside. It's actually already almost white on one side. To make this special, I've got some sour cream and half a lime. And this will just give it a nice tropical zing. Ooh, that's probably actually enough. <laughs> Don't want to water it down too much. Mm-mm. See. Mm. Yep, that'll go nicely. I think they're ready to turn. This is, yeah, really just fast cooking. Look at that. Just a nice little bit of gold on there. That's all we want. Oh, beautiful. Just the slightest amount of salt and pepper on the fish. And that's done. Woohoo! Actually, I've just noticed how far the water's come up. That was about three meters away from me when I started. Have a look. It's about oh, 50 centimeters from my foot. <laughs> Oh, adventurous cooking. And there we have fish and chips with lime and sour cream. I'm just going to put that on the side. Mm -mm -mm. I actually dropped one of the pieces of fish. I saved most of it <laughs> and it, it might be a little bit crunchy. But let's just try a little piece of coral trout just on its own. Looks like a little bone there maybe. Yep. Mmm. Oh. Shallow fried just on its own. Salt and pepper is delicious. The chippies. Mm -mm -mm. And you can probably hear that wind coming up now. Mm. Probably probably just going to about 12 knots. Mm. Oh, this is good. I'm glad I did this here. I'll try this sauce with the with the fish. Mm. I am glad I did this here rather than the bush kitchen. I do like the bush kitchen, but when the weather's like this, mm, where else would you rather be? Simple dish, 
but oh so tasty. Mm -mm. Wow. Oh, I totally forgot <laughs> to tell you guys about all the stuff that's going on. Oh, I lose the plot sometime. So, I'm doing a fishing course, online fishing course. There'll be a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It'll go all the way from how to tie a hook on a line to doing crazy stuff like me. Of course, you know, everything is at your own risk, but I'm gonna teach you the stuff that I know, the stuff that I've learned over 40 years. I've also contracted a company to do my merch. So hopefully before Christmas, actually probably, oh, it might even be in this video, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably do a separate video. But my merch has always been really expensive and it has to be shipped from overseas. So this is an Australian company that will, I'm pretty sure they will actually post overseas, but it's made in Australia. So anyone in Australia, it should be lower postage um, and not as expensive. Like this, this shirt here, I had 30 made. They cost me $50 each. That's, that's my price. And then if I try and sell them on, they have to be like 60 or, yeah, you know, I've been selling them at 60, but um, I've still got a few left. I'm totally sure I've forgotten something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, no idea. Uh, early next year, there should be some interesting news coming. So keep an eye out for that. I'm not gonna let any cat out of the bag at this stage. Mm. But, very exciting times for me, for the channel, and just all around. Mm. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch you next time. Mm. Do good. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.